Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to my channel. Wrapping up my week of OU videos is a trilogy that you've all been waiting for. How to run your DE300 project. If you're doing a survey or text-based video, do check out the links in the description below for the relevant videos or the card here. I should mention that I personally went through the survey method while I was studying DE300, so everything that is in this video is through what I understand from the relevant chapters and all the module materials that the OU has provided. All right, let's not waffle on any longer than we have to. Let's talk about your experimental project. What is an experiment? So you've chosen or were given the experimental method. What is it? Experiments are the setups for measurements that allow for the testing of a variable. Unlike the survey method, which asks a single research question, the experiment starts with a prediction of the relationship between two or more variables. And as you should know by now, variables are the measurable elements or factors that are believed to impact a situation or phenomena. In general, the experimental method gives researchers a lot more room for creativity when seeking out to test their hypotheses. It opens up more avenues for psychological testing compared to the survey or text-based methods, although I should stress that different methodologies seek to test different aspects of the field of psychology. Alas, since you're a student of the Open University and thus a distant learning student, the scope of your creativity is quite limited. But that doesn't mean that you can't still have fun. Planning. One of the most important things that you need to be aware of while planning your project is to keep it simple. I know it is really difficult to do, but trust me, you really shouldn't be too ambitious here. That was a mistake that I personally made during my DE300 studies. You need to be aware that this is only a bachelor's level psychology project. No one is expecting you to discover the latest psychological breakthrough. They just want to make sure that you understand the steps necessary to run a successful research project. Again, I need to stress that when I did my DE300 project, I did so as a survey student. So all the details here are from from what I understood from book two, chapter 12, and other experimental related materials that you find on the DE300 website. For your experiment, you need to do some intense planning. Just like the survey and text-based methods, an experimental research project seeks to fill in the gaps and holes found in the existing literature. The first step of the planning stage involves finding a gap that you enjoy researching. This is incredibly important. After all, you won't do your your best if you're not enjoying the work that you do. Although do keep in mind the constraints of it being a bachelor's project. When you've identified a hole to fill, you will then need to narrow down exactly what kind of question you need to formulate in order to investigate it. Within chapter 12 of the second textbook, there is one example of a research question that you could ask. How does personally relevant emotional information affect prospective memory performance in older and younger adults? The keyword is effect, which assumes that there is a relationship at play. Once you've narrowed down your research question, you need to create your hypothesis or hypotheses. In general, your hypothesis needs to identify one or more independent variables, IV, or factors, which then measures a change in the dependent variable, dv, while all other variables remain constant. Once defined, you then need to make a predicting statement, which then is your hypothesis. It is crucial that your hypothesis leads to an effect, as the dv is an important key in the experimental method. Otherwise, there's not really a point to running your research project with this methodology. There are two types of hypotheses that you need to be aware of. One tailed, which directly predicts that the manipulation of the IV will cause the dv to happen or not happen. Two -tailed which states that in general a change will occur but the hypothesis doesn't specify in which direction it will go. Either or will be appropriate for use but it is recommended that you use a one-tailed hypothesis for your DE300 project. Using the same prospective memory research question from book 2 chapter 12, here are a few example hypotheses that you can draw from. Number one, older adults aged 70 to 80 will make significantly more prospective memory 
errors than younger participants, age 20 to 30. Here, the target IV is age. Example number two. Personally relevant stimuli will produce fewer prospective memory errors than the general emotional stimuli. Here, the target IV is stimuli. Once you have your RQ and your hypothesis, you will then need to design the experiment as a whole. Open Sesame. Because you're a distant learning student, you will somehow need to conduct your experiments in the same manner. This is where Open Sesame comes in. Open Sesame is a program that will allow you to conduct your data collection segment of your project by hosting your experiment. But Open Sesame cannot replace an experimental condition completely. So again, do not be too ambitious with your project. I would love to show you how to get started on Open Sesame, but since I've already graduated, I've lost access to it. Also, since I had done the survey method, I had not need to conduct my own experiments, although I did participate in a lot. So please do pay attention to the specific experiment module materials. As always, if you have specific questions in regards to your experimental project, do ask your tutor via email or your group forum or your project forum. But I have left some interesting videos down in the description, so hopefully those can help you. Piloting. Piloting can be seen as a test run. You need to do this to ensure that there are no errors in your experiment, whether it's grammatical, structural or otherwise. This is important so that your actual participants will have a smooth sailing experience when taking your experiment. Firstly, you need to confirm with your tutor whether or not you're ready for the piloting stage. Once you've been given the green light, share that draft experiment with your fellow students in your tutor group forum or even just members of your household. Just remember to ask for feedback. You will only need two or three people to help you with this process. And once you've completed this step, you will be ready to share your experiment with the world. Analysis. Depending on the kind of study that you're planning, the analysis that it entails will be different. The OU has made a handy little tool called the Statistical Decision Tree, which you would have had access to back in DE200, which is meant to help you decide which analytical method is most appropriate for your project. I've linked that to the description below. As an experiment student, you will have a lot more choice in your analytical methods compared to survey or text-based students. Though it's not so much of a choice, really it's more on the specific details of your experimental project. As much as I'd love to run through each and every analytical method with you, I can't. Again, since I'm a graduate, I've lost access to SPSS. So in terms of how to carry out the analysis, please do pay attention to the OU SPSS tutorials. I've linked those in the description below. But if you find that the OU tutorials were a bit too simplistic for you, I did. There are plenty of YouTube tutorials that you can check out to help you understand the process better. Just remember to look specifically for SPSS tutorials. I've also linked some helpful ones in the description below. Report writing. Although you'll get a 5,000 word limit for your report writing, as an experimental student, you don't really need to worry too much about meeting it. That huge limit is actually for text-based students. For survey and experiment students I would say that you will have to meet between 3,000 to 4,000 words not any less I personally lean towards the 4,000 mark with my survey report or with a total of 3,910 words either way all reports regardless of methodology have the same basic structure title abstract introduction methods results discussion conclusion references and appendices. Let's get into each of the sections in more detail, shall we? Your title should make it clear as to what it is you're researching. Since you're doing an experiment, your project should make clear that you're studying the effects of two or more variables and not analyzing a phenomena or investigating a potential relationship. Here are three different example titles from three real research projects across the three methods, survey, text base, and experiment. Aim to keep your title short and to the point, around 20 to 25 
five words maximum. Abstract. Here, you discuss your project in a nutshell, but you should do this after you've done the rest of your project write-up. This is because in your abstract, you need to condense your introduction, method, results and conclusion sections into about 200 words. Your abstract should provide just enough information to make it clear to your readers exactly what your project entailed, but not too much that it's a bit wordy. Here are a few examples from published journals. Now, don't feel too intimidated by the language that they use here. Just try to write as academically as possible, similar to how you've been writing in all your TMAs thus far. Introduction. In the introduction section, you need to provide the rationale behind why you believe that your project topic should be researched. This is not, I repeat, this is not the same as a literature review. It does have aspects of a literature review, but in essence, the introduction brings in previous literature to justify your project. If you're studying a topic that is under-researched, discuss the research that has been done thus far. If you're investigating a hole in the literature, talk about it. The bulk of your word count should be within your introduction and discussion sections, so aim to fill both sections with about 35% of your word count each. The method section is normally the section that is recommended that you write first. This is because it is the first part of the project that you actually undergo and it's easier to write this section as you're going along anyway. It's also the easiest to complete. For experimental students, this section is split into three subsections, participants, measure and procedure. The participant subsection discusses your participant pool. Did you limit the pool in any way? Mention that and explain why here. If you didn't place any restrictions, you should mention that as well. Always ensure that you're following the ethical guidelines of the British Psychological Society. I've put a link to that in the description below. Measure is where you describe the equipment that you used for your research project. This includes the Open Sesame program, which I assume you'd be using to carry out the data collection process, SPSS as well, etc. Anything that you may have used during the creation of your project should be mentioned in this subsection. Finally, in the procedure subsection, you need to describe in as much detail as possible the steps that you've taken for your research project. How did you create your experiment? How did you share it? Email? Text message? EPW? How long was the experiment live for? Describe taking the experiment from the perspective of a participant. Talk about data exploitation. Was the data aggregated and anonymous? Are you going to comply with data regulations like GDPR? What program did you use to carry out your data analysis? Which analytical method did you use? Remember to get in as much detail as possible. Your project needs to be able to be replicated by other researchers. Overall, the method section should take about 20% of your overall word count. Results is where you discuss all the funky numbers that you've acquired during your SPSS analysis. You should always start off with your demographics, how many male and or females were in your survey, what was the mean age of the total participant pool, or if you provided age brackets, which age bracket provided the most data. You can obtain this from your SPSS data set if you've collected the relevant data. Do this by clicking on analyze and then descriptive statistics statistics and, and frequencies. Depending on the kind of data that you need collected, you'll get different kind of frequencies. In general, it should be age and gender or sex, but you could also obtain frequencies of whatever other demographics you had asked your participants. If you had asked participants to pick between age groups, then you should get SPSS to show you the frequencies and the percentages. Same as if you collected participant gender or sex. If you ask participants to fill up the exact ages, then you will need to obtain the standard deviation, mean, minimum and maximum values. In terms of actual results of your analysis, 
analysis. You should be aware that the OU wants you to follow the example right up in the SPSS tutorials almost to the T. Here's an example from their regression tutorial. Follow these formulas exactly if you want to avoid pain later on. The discussion again takes up a majority of your work count along with your introduction. They both should be about 30% of your total work count. Here you need to discuss the results of your study without bringing any of the math or numbers. Bring back the studies that you had discussed in your introduction section and do not, I repeat, do not bring in any new papers that you had not already brought up in your introduction section. You can't expect to add new building blocks to the bottom of your house when it's nearing completion. So go through all the studies that you've talked about in your introduction section and relate them to your findings. Did your model work as expected? Why? Why not? What difficulties did you face during your data collection period? You should also discuss the limitations that you may or may not have faced during your project. The conclusion basically rounds up the discussion into one to two digestible paragraphs. Since this is technically the end of your report, you can discuss what future research can do to further refine or complement the results of your study. Make your conclusions short and sweet. Aim to hit about 3% of your total word count. The references list is exactly as you've been doing throughout your OU study. Use the Harvard referencing system and always arrange the list in alphabetical order. Appendices is where you attach every aspect of your research project. Get a notepad, here's a little checklist for you. Participant brief, participant debrief, your SPSS output tables, any of the photos or terms that you might have used in your open sesame experiment. And that's about it really. The most frustrating thing about this process is that you're not allowed to have any drafts checked by your tutor or any other tutor for that matter. Although your title and abstract will be checked during TMA04. You can ask as many specific questions as you like about how to write this thing or that thing, but ultimately you will be on your own. Tips. I tried to contact some experimental tutors for some help on this tip section, but I had gotten no response from them. I'm not sure whether they're ignoring me or if they just don't check their emails from random OU students, although a text-based tutor did get back to me, so... Anyway, for this section, I came up with a few general project writing tips that hopefully can help you guys. Tip number one, bounce off ideas with your tutor as soon as you have them. The earlier you can do this, the better. Try to have it set in stone by December since you need to give a working title and a literature review by the time TME or two comes around. Tip number two, ask a lot of questions. Do not go at this alone. It doesn't matter if you think that you're annoying your tutor, just ask them. Even if you think it's the stupidest question in the world, just ask them. Your tutor is meant to be your project supervisor and they should be working hard to ensure that you understand exactly what you need to do to run a successful research project. Number three, double check with your tutor the number of participants that they are expecting you to collect data from. This is the same tip that I provided for survey students. I felt like this was important because when I went through DE300 extremely frustratingly, I had two tutors from the exact same cluster giving me two different bits of information. My tutor only expected 100 responses from me, although I got a lot more. So please do double check with your own tutor the number of participants that they are expecting from you. I know that it isn't as easy to collect data for experiments than it is for surveys, so please do double check with your tutor how many participants they are expecting you to get. Doing this early on really takes the load off, especially when you start distributing your experiment. Tip number four, no matter what, just follow the damn instructions. Even if the instructions don't make any sense, you should just follow whatever the OU has provided you to the T. But if something doesn't make sense, ask your tutor for clarification. If it still doesn't make sense, ask again. And if it still doesn't make sense after that, just follow the instructions. 
Even if a tutor tells you to do something differently from what the OU has provided, follow what the OU has told you to do. Trust me, it will save you a lot of grief and emotional energy. Tip number five, save everything you do twice over. This is so, 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 so important. I know you will only be spending a few months with your project, but trust me, you should still create backups. Save two versions of your experiment. Save your original data set twice over. Save every step that you make in SPSS separately, cleaning up, coding, etc. Save your report file on your laptop and on the cloud. And finally, tip number six, proofread your work before you even think of sending it off. With any assignment that you write, you really should proofread your work before sending it off. This is to ensure that you are writing academically and to ensure that you're not sending off a report full of grammatical errors. I personally ran each and every one of my report sections through Grammarly before combining them into a Word file. If you're interested in checking out Grammarly, I have added a link in the description below. All right, that's it for this video. I really hope that it helped you and if you did please let me know by giving that like button a big clickety click. Subscribe to my channel if you like. I wouldn't be making any more OU related videos after this series but I will hopefully be making some interesting videos so I do hope that you stick around for those. If you've already decided on a topic or if you're halfway through your experiment, do let me know what you've decided to do in the comments below. I'm really interested to hear all the different ideas that you guys have come up with and maybe your ideas could inspire other students, present and future. Also, if you do have any tips of your own as an experimental student, please do leave them in the comments below. Anyway, that's it for my OU series. I hope you're all staying safe out there and I hope you enjoy the rest of your OU study. Good luck with all your projects and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.